Despite enduring many difficult tragedies throughout her lifetime, Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton became one of America's most charitable and triumphant leaders. From establishing an orphanage to participating in charitable organizations, Eliza Hamilton contributed greatly to her communities through her many achievements. Although she experienced death and hardships, Eliza aided in building and growing America. Elizabeth Schuyler was born on August 9, 1757 to war hero Philip Schuyler and Catherine Van Rensselaer in Albany, New York. Eliza had a total of 14 siblings, most of them dying young. She was homeschooled like most of the young girls of her time and grew up in her father's mansion and summer home. Growing up in one of the richest and most respected families in New York, Eliza was pushed to marry well and accomplish great things. From a young age, Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton suffered the consequences of war. Being the daughter of a war general, Eliza experienced a great amount of death and destruction. In early October of 1777, Elizabeth's childhood home was destroyed due to British forces during the Revolutionary War. General Schuyler and his home were in danger of being taken by British General John Burgoyne and his troops. In precaution of this occurring, Schuyler had his family burn the fields and crops. In case the British seized the home, Schuyler didn't want the soldiers to have any supplies to last the winter. The pastures were the pride and joy of the Schuyler family, making this task both difficult and heartbreaking. When General Burgoyne arrived at the empty estate, he ordered his troops to burn the rest of the mansion and surrounding property. Elizabeth moved with the rest of her family to the Schuyler's Albany residence. The move to Albany introduced Eliza to her future husband, Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton had been delivering a message to General Schuyler and along the way met Elizabeth. Although the destruction of her childhood home brought her great sorrow, leaving Eliza's past behind led her to the introduction to her future. Alexander Hamilton was a low-class immigrant from the Caribbean. His mother died when he was a child and his father abandoned the family before Hamilton was born. Despite Alexander's low status and lack of wealth, Elizabeth had fallen in love with his intelligence, charm, and poetic genius. Alexander and Eliza were love-struck, which was rare in their time as most couples married for wealth. General Schuyler approved of the courtship, believing Hamilton would achieve great things. Eliza Schuyler and Alexander Hamilton were married on December 14, 1780, at the Schuyler Mansion in Saratoga, New York. Alexander and Eliza had four children total between the years 1782 and 1788. In 1789, Alexander Hamilton was appointed the first Secretary of Treasury under President George Washington. Due to his commitment to the strenuous job, Hamilton was never home, overworked, and exhausted the majority of the time. This set a heavy toll on his marriage, causing him to become distant with his wife. In 1791, Elizabeth and the children went on a two-week-long visit to her father's summer home in upstate New York. A stressed-out Alexander reluctantly rejected the invitation to attend, leaving him alone to his work. While his family was on the trip, Alexander received an unannounced visitor at his home. Mariah Reynolds, a 23-year-old housewife, had arrived at the Hamilton residence in tears, confiding to Alex about her abusive marriage. Alexander decided to help, providing Mrs. Reynolds with a loan. He escorted her back to her own residence. They spoke, and he gave friendly consolation. However, the encounter then stemmed into something more. Mariah Reynolds and Alexander Hamilton began an affair that lasted for about a year. Mariah's husband, James Reynolds, later found out about the affair through his wife and was unsure of how to approach the situation. However, he eventually came to a decision. James Reynolds began blackmailing Alexander Hamilton in December of 1791. Hamilton was forced to pay him a large sum of money monthly in exchange for Reynolds' silence about the affair. Hamilton was a man of honor and would not allow the scandal to go public or have his wife find out. With Hamilton as the Secretary of Treasury, Elizabeth was often left home alone to raise the children. Eliza became pregnant with their fifth child in 1794. However, the pregnancy took a turn for the worse. Eliza had fallen terribly ill with a potentially fatal sickness. The illness was harmful to the pregnancy as Eliza miscarried in November. Elizabeth was utterly devastated over the loss of the child. Still left to raise her other four children, Eliza fell into a minor depression. The tragedy of losing a child swept over her, but she still pushed through. Alex and Eliza had their fifth child, William S. Hamilton, on August 4, 1797. The couple had been very happy, but the joy wouldn't last for long, as tragedy was yet to come. 
Throughout the past six years, Alexander Hamilton had continued his deal with James Reynolds, paying great amounts of money for his silence. Hamilton, as he was Secretary of Treasury, had been accused of embezzlement due to the large sums being exchanged between him and Reynolds. In an effort to clear and protect his name, Hamilton decided to publicize the affair. On August 25, 1797, Alexander Hamilton published the pamphlet, Observations on Certain Documents, better known as the Reynolds Pamphlet. The publication highlighted the details of the affair, including the bribery proposed by James Reynolds. Elizabeth Hamilton was incredibly heartbroken by the affair. Her immediate reaction was to leave Alex and move back in with her parents in Albany. However, she decided to stay with her family and work on the marriage. The tragedy passed, leaving room for happiness in the relationship and family. With the weight of the affair off his chest, Alexander worked to mend the relationship with his wife. The couple grew even closer through the despair and a stronger relationship blossomed. Sadly, this wasn't the end of heartache for Elizabeth. She was a part of a tight-knit family that often wrote one another. Margarita, Eliza's younger sister, fell ill with an unknown sickness in 1799. Her condition declined quickly, and it led to her death on the 14th of March in 1801. Alexander was the first to hear the news, and he was the one to inform his wife. In late November of the same year, Eliza and Alexander's son, Philip, participated in a duel that proved fatal. The disagreement started when a young lawyer, George Eager, implied that Hamilton's army was formed specifically to make a fool out of the Republicans. Philip spotted George at a Manhattan theater and confronted him. On the day of the duel, neither George or Philip fired at command. They rather stood there and looked at each other, confused on how to proceed. Eager was the first to fire, and the bullet caught above Philip's right hip and ripped through his body where it settled in his left arm. He was quickly taken to be examined and treated. According to Dr. David Hosack, when Hamilton arrived, his reaction was full of grief and sorrow, and he initially fainted from the overwhelming amount of anxiety. Philip died from his wounds, and for a long amount of time, Eliza was distant and, and could not be comforted. Her eighth child was born on the 2nd of June, 1802 and she named him Philip Jr. in honor of her deceased son. Early the next year, Elizabeth was then notified by a letter that her mother, Catherine, died from a stroke that killed her within minutes on March 17, 1803. The deaths of her family broke her fragile heart, leaving her in great sorrow. Aaron Burr, a respected politician, ran for president in 1800 against former Vice President Thomas Jefferson along with John Adams. Burr and Jefferson received the same amount of votes in the Electoral College. The House of Representatives had to break the tie between the two candidates. The representatives casted over 30 ballots, but neither candidate received the majority. Many respected public officials tried to sway the House to one side, including Alexander Hamilton. Despite his previous disagreements with the former vice president, Hamilton was in favor of Jefferson. Hamilton believed that Aaron Burr didn't serve the people and therefore wasn't the right candidate. The House of Representatives was greatly swayed by Hamilton's remarks. Finally, Jefferson received the majority vote in the House and won the election of 1800. Aaron Burr became the vice president, but Thomas Jefferson was not keen on this choice. In the election of 1804, Jefferson did not support Burr for re-election. Aaron Burr lost his place in central government and was deeply angered. Burr blamed his political downfall on Hamilton and challenged him to a duel. On July 11, 1804, Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr met in Weehawken, New Jersey. On the count, Hamilton fired his gun into the air, meaning he wanted to resolve the conflict peacefully. However, Burr still fired at Hamilton, the bullet entering through his stomach and lodging near his spine. Alexander Hamilton died on July 12th, the following afternoon, with Elizabeth and his children at his side. Alex hadn't told Elizabeth about the duel, but he left her a letter that should be given to her in the event that he died. Elizabeth was overwhelmed with grief. The death of her husband was sudden and unexpected, leaving Eliza in both shock and pain for a long time. However, Eliza eventually fought through the grief and kept her husband's memory alive. The death of Alexander was a tremendous and horrible event in Eliza's life, but it inspired her to build the future he would have wanted, but just couldn't be a part of. Instead of focusing on the tragedies, Eliza used them to motivate her. 
In 1802, the Society for the Relief of Poor Widows with Small Children was instituted as an organization to help the sick. Elizabeth joined in 1806, and she became one of the leaders of the organization. They supplied widows and their children with living essentials and even an education. Elizabeth, a widow herself, she wanted to provide for those who were in situations similar to her own. Although Eliza was dealing with her own struggles, she wanted to care for those who were in a bad place of their own. The organization lasted for 77 years, spending about $300,000 raised mostly by the women that worked there. On March 15, 1806, Elizabeth Hamilton, Isabella Graham, and Joanna Bethune established the Orphan Asylum Society, the first New York private orphanage. Known today as Graham Wyndham, the Orphan Asylum Society provided underprivileged New York orphans with clothing, food, and an education. The children in the establishment consisted majorly of immigrant orphans whose parents died on the voyage to America. Elizabeth was co-founder of the orphanage significantly because of her late husband. Alexander was an immigrant orphan and didn't have a safe haven like the Orphan Asylum Society. The institution is one of Elizabeth Hamilton's greatest and most significant achievements. In 1821, Elizabeth was named first directress of the orphanage, which is a high honor. She later stepped down from the position in 1848 because of her old age. When Alexander died, he not only left a family, he left a large amount of debt. However, the death of her father in November of 1804 helped reduce some of the financial struggles when she collected her portion of the inheritance. Despite the extra money, she was still strained financially. She wrote to one of her husband's old colleagues in hope of assistance. In the spring of 1810, she traveled to Washington, D.C. to protest Congress. She was asking for her husband's pension that he had waived at the end of the Revolutionary War. This money could make her life financially secure. Unfortunately, Congress was in no rush to ensure the legacy of Alexander Hamilton. Finally, in the spring of 1816, Congress passed an act for the relief of Elizabeth Hamilton. This included land and a payment of five full years of service that amounted to about $10,000, which nowadays would be about $158,000. The death of her husband was tragic loss and fueled Eliza to support her family and her husband's legacy. Elizabeth had a very strong connection with her older sister, Angelica. They were always together and had a profound trust for one another. When Alexander died, Angelica comforted her sister and Elizabeth confided in her. The sisters also worked to defend his honor against harsh criticisms from his former opponents. On March 13, 1814, Angelica Schuyler Church died, leaving Eliza truly heartbroken. Her sister had always been by her side, and now Eliza had to learn to live without her. In 1848, Elizabeth, now 91 and recently retired, was living with her daughter in Washington, D.C. Eliza was still very restless in her old age. She helped Dolly Madison raise funds for the Washington Monument. Elizabeth's decision to assist in raising funds for the monument was greatly impacted by her husband's death. Eliza wanted Alexander's memory to live on within her actions. With George Washington being her late husband's mentor, Elizabeth wanted to protect both Hamilton and Washington's place in history. On November 9, 1854, Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton passed away at the age of 97. From her husband's affair to the death of loved ones, Eliza was overrun with hardships. And although she faced many tragedies in her lifetime, instead of dwelling on them, Eliza used her pain as motivation and support for her great achievements.